this up, TT. Okay, he's gonna be on the video, so. <laughs> What's up? To say something, what you want to say, man? What's the, what's the, what's the, oh. Uh, so you want to drop and pick it up, right? You know where we going? You know where we going, Titi? So, uh, hi everybody. So the topic today is, um, you know, I've been thinking about a lot about how to improve this ecosystem of social impact because uh, I truly believe, uh, truly believe in the cause. I truly believe that um, social impact will solve a lot of the social ills that the world is uh, is is having today. But Kigali uh, Hai. But um, the challenge now is. Um, what are the structure that needs to be put inside this ecosystem to speed up the process, to make it easier? Uh, but most of all, to really increase the chance of some of those uh, social entrepreneurs to succeed because it's booming. I mean, everywhere I go, everywhere I talk to, uh, there's a lot, lot more local social entrepreneurs that are really coming up with new solutions uh, to, um, to solve some of the social ills that the world is facing. But what's the problem? You know, across Africa now, you see it's a, it's a, it's a lot more easier to register uh, a business. Unfortunately, the, the challenge now is we need to uh, break down the, um, the structure. We need to make it uh, to a point where, for example, we need to classify social impact to a different class. You know, we have NGOs, we have the private sector, I mean, uh, we, we have uh, for-profit businesses. But social impact, it's harder. Because you're trying to make money, build a sustainable business. At the same time, you're trying to do good to society. That's extremely hard, you know. But what can you do, you know, to facilitate those things? We need to classify social impact to a different class. It'll help a few things. Number one, it'll help government to measure their SDG impact through social impact entrepreneur. Now you can measure TT. TT. No. Now you can measure how many social impact that you're having, what they're working on, what they're solving. You know. Uh, also, the classification will have will help <coughs> on the tax aspect. You know, by lowering tax. It's not necessarily removing, but lowering tax. You cannot help social enterprise where labor laws are the same for large corporation than it is for social impact. It's ridiculous. You know, you're paying the same amount of taxes as a startup social enterprise than you are as a big, huge corporation. What the incentive for people to, to fix those problems, those social issues, you know? There is none. You know, and 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 so so what? How do we expect those young men and women to keep pushing? Because not only they have to register a company, they have to figure out pay taxes um, before they even make a dime. They have to use the money, um, you know, that they're getting uh, to try to build something. Unfortunately, you know, most of that money going to expenses or or taxes or whatever costs that encounter, you know, through the process and and really minimize their impact on the ground. You know, so those are a few things. The second thing is government across Africa need to create a one-stop shop platform for social impact to anyone that wants to partner with them to solve some of those social ills of their communities and their countries. I just don't get it. Why governments across the boards are not putting stuff in place to facilitate because government is not going to solve everything. We, we've seen it. NGOs are not going to solve everything. We've seen it. Those organ entities have been existing for decades and the problem seems to increase. Um, of course, social impact is not going to solve everything, but the idea of a social enterprise is that it's usually created from individuals, from those communities, looking at the ways to solve problems facing by their communities. So it's, it's community-led or individual from those communities leading the way, coming up with solutions. They know their community, they're in their community, they're there for a long run. So 
they have a better chance to succeed than anybody else. I don't see who else has a chance. Instead of NGOs, you know, having a long-term uh, um, uh, ways of doing things where they're developing solution from their offices that are, you know, 99% of the time, not even in those community. I've seen so many times, you know, companies coming, um, they've developed already a solution from students, you know, uh, from those countries coming up with some high tech stuff. And then they come in those community realize there's so much challenges that those high tech are not working. It's, it's a top to bottom approach that never works. You know, so so that's the biggest problem. How can government facilitate those individuals and support, not just facilitate on a partnership side, but support those guys, connect them with the community leaders uh, if they want to expand their project, you know, uh, coming up with additional things that was not there before. You know, if you want to partner with government in most countries, I can only speak for one or Uganda. You know, it takes months, even years before you can do that on each because you have to go to each level of uh, government leadership, talk to them, uh, explain what you're trying to do. They have to be a better way. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of innovation. Same thing with partnership with um, NGOs, you know. I always say, and I've said it before, NGOs have a short-term approach of things. That's just the way they wire. You know, they come in, they get a budget, they have to do 12, 24 uh, months of work. And uh, from there, you know, uh, when they're done, they move, you know, they move to the next one, they look for funding and all. Why can we be a transition in between where they transfer whatever project, first of all, work with existing solution, from those community, transfer uh, the work to the social enterprise or enterprises when they're done and co-finance some of those projects or co-apply for some of those projects. I truly believe the way NGOs is structured now is obsolete, obsolete, it's done, it's over. Um, yeah, those who are not gonna adapt and change the way they're gonna be doing business will be dead in one uh, in less than five years. They're not going to exist anymore. Funders are tired of giving money to solution and the problems keep coming back. I mean, you know, you, you, we, we need to have a, a, a different mindset and a different approach of things. It, it's common sense. And again, there's a lot more to be done. I think the other way also, and that's something I, I spoke about, about, you know, a lot of times and share with those things with the people about IP, IP registration. They need to be a one-stop shop in Africa for IP uh, because, again, it will focus or help those innovator, inventor, whatever you want to call them, to start registering and recording um, their ideas, their innovation, their products in countries. We need to stop the drain of technology outside Africa. You know, on paper right now, Africa is consuming technology not producing anything yet yet if i look if you look around i've looked around i see so much technology developed in africa nobody's registering the ip nobody's protected some of them that can register outside the continent a lot of them you know have a group level outside the continent i've talked about it a lot of time we need to facilitate those things because we need to start showing or documenting the data that we able to develop solution for our own problem. So those are the key thing I believe that will trigger or increase the amount of social enterprise uh, on the continent, you know? And uh, if we don't improve this ecosystem, you know, the rest about funding and all that, that's common sense, but that part is growing. That's why I didn't mention. But if you think about something, if you have an idea, if you're in this space, uh, if you have some ideas of what I'm missing, because I'm putting together a memo. A memo of collecting information and, and, and things that can be added to the memo. So I'll be sharing that memo with some key stakeholder that want to see or want to share that memo with their local leaders that would like to improve their, um, their ecosystem. If you have some ideas what's missing, what needs to be improved on the micro level that can have a huge impact, please, you know, mention it below on comments or... Oh, man. <laughs> I thought we were going to hit somebody, man. My bad. Mention it below on comments. You know, share some ideas 
I'm always open to new ideas. Of course, I don't have all the solution. I can only share it from what I know. Uh, but yeah, man, you know, share those things and uh, looking forward or ask any question. I'm here to answer, man. Take care, guys. Thank you.